So where to begin? Um, I think the first, and it sounds uh, uh, quite trivial, but, uh, but I think we overlook this all the time. You shouldn't have to be a rocket scientist to understand what companies in this space do. And I've been in this space for an awful long time, and I still go to websites of vendors, websites of competitors, sometimes my own website, and for the life of me, have no idea what we do for a living. And I think that language is so important because generally speaking, we lead with features, we lead with the complicated AI machine learning, and we don't really talk about what we do. And I think, again, what Dennis showed, when you look at the supply chain and you focus on things like pl plan, decision, transact, deliver, report and optimize, if we all kind of coalesce around that supply chain, it's important, number one, to demystify what we do because that's one of the biggest co uh, complaints from marketers and outsiders. And number two, it really helps to identify where the inefficiencies in the supply chain are. So if no one knows what anyone does and it straddles all, all over the place, it's not possible to focus and say, transact is really where the problem is occurring. Let's real focus on that, who transacts in this space. So I, I really encourage the industry to lean into the IAB uh, definitions in, in language that they've used here. The second area I think is terribly important is we should do what we say we do. Uh, I think examples of that are uh, folks that say they're in the data business, but they're really in the media business. Uh, no, you're in the, you're in the media business, and, and I think that helps uh, clarify what folks do. In our world, we're, we run a marketplace, and how you run that marketplace is terribly important. Uh, if folks believe that when they're buying in your marketplace, it's a second price auction, but you're running a first price auction, that's not good for anybody. So the idea is, one isn't being data or being media, being first price, being second price. I'm not trying to put judgments on it. I'm just simply saying we need to be more transparent about exactly what it is that we do and what the models are. Thirdly, the ad tech tax. It just simply has to be unearthed. Uh, it is, it, I've masked all the time as an investor conference yesterday and folks are saying, uh, we've heard all about this ad tech tax. How much actually goes to the, to, to the buy the ad? And it is not an easy answer. People have uh, uh, looked at proxies. But the simple fact is, there isn't a, per, there isn't a top LNA advertiser that isn't going to demand the answer to that question and have it audited so that they know exactly what's happening with their spend. And I think as an industry, we have to figure out a way that we unearth every bit of the cost associated with the transaction through that supply chain. Uh, number three, I think, uh, uh, rather four, uh, pricing, individual pricing. Uh, we need to be radically transparent about pricing. I would say that uh, if I, when I came to Rubicon, I would not grade the company as an A as it relates to radical transparency with pricing. So we're changing that as we speak. Uh, within the confines of the individual contracts that you have, we're, we, run, again, run a marketplace. We charge a, a, the seller a fee. We charge a buyer a fee. Uh, it's time to let uh, everyone understand exactly what the, the, the fee structure is to, to make it plain and simple. And it's, it's a pledge we have, and I think it's something that everyone in every part of the ecosystem should do because that then leads to being able to roll up what that ad tech tax looks like. Uh, Dennis alluded to it. Um, we have some projects in the way working on it. But uh, the fifth change, I think, is the consumer. Uh, we have to be far more respectful of the consumer. If the dream was this one-to-one -one communication, then let's have it be a one-to-one -one communication. I don't think one company can make a change without working with everyone else. But it's not such a radical idea to allow a consumer to choose what advertising they see. It's not a radical idea for a consumer to not uh, want to be uh, advertised in a certain way. And I think it's something that we've been on the edges about as an industry. I know some people have done great work in terms of uh, initiatives against it. But I think without the whole industry leaning in and coming up with standards here, it's, uh, it's, it's really going to put a governor on the continued growth of what we're seeing in programmatic. 
Uh, number six, we work together against bad actors. Uh, again, the IAB has done a wonderful job. Uh, TAG is a wonderful organization. I encourage everyone that's a member company and not a member company to join it. It is the first step against bad actors, but, it, but it's really going to be difficult to say that IAB companies can't work with non-TAG members. So therefore, we need to work together. We need to share data between each other about who are the bad folks on either side of the marketplace? Who are the bad buyers? Who are the bad sellers? I've had conversations with friends at Pubmatic, with that Nexus, with OpenX, and everyone agrees in our sector that it makes a ton of sense because we see it. We, we, we shut someone off, they go to another exchange. Someone shuts them off from that exchange, they go to our exchange. And we just, we, sometimes we, we see it too late, sometimes they see it too late. The simple fact is, we, this is much bigger than a, a quarter of uh, revenue that uh, you probably didn't want in the first place. This is uh, uh, us getting together, being mature. It's a mature industry. It's time to act mature uh, as uh, the top leading vendors in the space.